Given the more expensive price point for the Samsung G7 Odyssey, is it worth the price for what you get? Well, we will evaluate that very question in this review right here on Robitech. Now, before we jump into our evaluation, I want to precursor this review a little bit. Number one, it's being done with a fancy hat. Thank you very much. I don't wear hats very often, and I think we should all celebrate that. So a big celebration for my hat, because my hat is pretty awesome. This is not going to be a tech deep dive. As a gamer or as a professional, should you use this monitor? 1000R curvature versus 1800R curvature. Let's just show you a comparison between those two because this monitor is very curved. That is one of the huge sell point, selling points that Samsung is trying to get across here. The resolution on this bad boy is 2560 by 1440 or 1440p resolution monitor. The refresh rate is 240 hertz. It's a VA panel. Now I'm gonna show you a graphic here because I, wanna, I want you to understand what VA stands for versus the other one. VA stands for vertical alignment. It is a, it's a type of LED or a form of LCD panel display technology. VA panels are characterized as having the best contrast and image depth along with other main types of displays like TN or IPS. Now TN is, stands for twisted pneumatic and this is a type of LCD or a form of LED panel display technology. TN panels are characterized as being the fastest and cheapest among the other main displays. And then finally, which is the IPS, which stands for in-plane switching, is a type of LED or form of LCD display panel technology. IPS panels are characterized as having the best color and viewing angles among the other main types of displays. One of the things I wanted to get to when I was doing this review is like so many times when I watch the amazing reviews from people like Hardware Unboxed or from the myriad of other players who do these kind of reviews is they'll say stuff like, this is a TN panel, or this is a VN panel, or this is, you know, this is refresh rate or hertz. And, and it never explains what that really means when you're kind of boiling it down to, should I buy this monitor or not? Now let's continue to talk about what's so awesome about the G7 Odyssey. It's got one millisecond response time, or so it's claimed. It supports G-Sync and FreeSync Premium Pro. And when you say FreeSync Premium Pro, unlike G-Sync, there are actually tiers of FreeSync. So if it's a FreeSync Premium Pro, that means it's at least 120 millihertz refresh rate at minimum, and it supports for low frame rate compensation. It's low latency in SDR and HDR, and support for HDR with meticulous color and luminance certification. Now, I didn't know for certain what their luminance certification was. In the case of supporting FreeSync Premium, that means it did pass some sort of certification for being a FreeSync Premium HDR monitor. Now this monitor is HDR 600. Now what's the difference between HDR 500 and HDR 1000? Because there are actually different ratings that this thing goes through to tell you what it is. So HDR 500 is local dimming. It's for thinner, lower cost, lower powered laptops and monitors. True local dimming at high contrast, HDR at the lowest price point, and thermal impact. It's got a peak luminance of 500 CD slash M2, optimized for better thermal control in super thin notework dis notebook displays. There's some color gamut, back levels, and bit depth requirements associated with display HDR 600 and Archel HDR 1000. Now, what does HDR 600 have? HDR 600 has it's targeting professional and enthusiast level laptops and high performance monitors like the Samsung G7. It's got true high contrast HDR with notable specular highlights. It's peak luminance of 600, double that of typical displays. It's got full screen flash requirements, renders realistic effects in games and movies, real-time contrast ratios with local dimming, yield and pressing highlights and deep blacks. It's got a visible increase in color gamut displayed against a pr already improved D, uh, display HDR 400 and it requires 10 bit processing. Now let's talk about HDR. HDR 1000, remember this is HDR 600, HDR 1000 is targeting professionals, enthusiasts, as well as content creator PCR monitors. So like game developers, uh, photo editors, video editors. It's got outstanding local dimming, high contrast HDR with advanced specular highlights, peak luminance of a thousand, more than three times that of a typical display, full screen flash requirements, delivering ultra realistic effects in games and movies. It's got an unprecedented long duration, high performance, ideal for content creation, local dimming yielding two times the contract ratio increase over HDR 600, and it's significantly visible increase in color gamut compared to display HDR 400 and also requires a 10-bit processing, 10-bit image processing. Now, outside of this range, just to kind of understand, like people are saying, well, what does this mean? When you think about HDR in, in general, it's no features are visible because there's no differentiation in the bright areas as everything appears just to be pure white, and there's no differentiation in the dark areas as everything appears to be pure black. So when you talk about 600 versus 1000 versus 400, 
when you think about those what could be white blobs on your monitor, those could be dithering effects in your clouds or in the darkness, it could be a, you know, a, a hidden creature or all sorts of things. That's what this really comes down to. Now, when you're talking about HDR 600, that's pretty good. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about how HDR does on the G7 later on, but I just wanted to give you some context behind when they talk about what is HDR 600 or what are all these marketing things actually mean. Now, let's talk about price. The 32 inch version is $799 and the 27 inch is $699. Just to be super transparent, the 32 inch and 27 inch are literally the most expensive at the time of this recording, 1440p monitors that you can buy. For inputs, what's on here? We've got HDMI 2.0, DisplayPoint 1.4 times two, headphone jack, and we've got USB 3 ports of which there are two of them. There's actually on the very bottom, there's actually an OSD that can be controlled via a little directional nub on the bottom. Then you can put to the right to basically do things like change inputs. And then you can also control the power there. That is an overview of what is in the Samsung G7 Odyssey. Basically how you got to the OSD, like what were the overall specs? What does it support? But let's talk about what that really means. I'm gonna give you a breakdown of the review. I'm gonna tell you specifically what this monitor is good at, what you may wanna steer away from if you're gonna purchase this monitor, and at a base level, as a gamer or as a professional, should you purchase this monitor? Now, what this review is not. This is not a deep dive into a bunch of technical jargon. Let's be super clear, Hardware Unbox nails this. There is no way that we at Roby Tech are going to compete or even want to compete with such an in-depth review like what they do there. If you wanna know the technical breakdown in terms of overscan, how it, how like, how very minusculely as we go from gray to gray across the entire gamut this monitor does. Hardware Unbox does that and they do it better than anybody else. So you can check out their, their video review for this right here, or you can just check out their channel in general if you really want a deep dive. What we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about the, at a base level, at a very simple level, what this monitor can do and then whether you should buy it. Now let's talk about what I use when I do my methods of reviewing. I, I, I'm gonna do what you do. I played a myriad of different games. Civilization VI, I played World of Warcraft, I played Overwatch, I played Destiny 2, I played Forza Horizon 7, I played Gears of War, I played Tomb Raider, video edited, I watched YouTube, did spreadsheets because that's what I do a lot of. And I did all of this stuff because I wanted to know on productivity stuff, how did this thing actually do? When I video edited, how was there actually any problems, especially with Adobe Premiere? Because you know, I was watching other reviews and reading other reviews about the curvature. Does this actually affect what I'm gonna, whether I'm going to enjoy the use of the monitor? And then again, I watch movies because hey, I have to watch a lot of YouTube. And what is what do movies look like on a curved screen? And then I compared features against similar monitors because that was also super important, specifically given the cost of this monitor overall. We also did some hardware testing. I specifically looked at things like what when I did stuff or like when we were looking for dark level ghosting and all those other things. I did some of that stuff, could at least talk about it and make sure that my monitor and everything like that, it also worked and was on par with the monitors that were also reviewed by people like Hardware Unbox, etc. I've had this panel for just over a week, which when you think about reviewing, specifically for me, that is not a lot of time. I've done some Cooler Master reviews um, and I'm doing two monitor reviews and I've had those, model, those panels for over a month. And I've only got to use this one for about 40 hours when I use the other monitors I've used them for over 100. We're gonna kick off our review and let's let's just talk about it. Breaking it all down, Samsung G7, what do we think? First and foremost, the price. When we look at the cost versus other panels, and we're talking about some really, really great panels, like for instance, the ASUS F127Q-P. We've got great monitor offerings from LG and ASUS. This panel is expensive. Now, when you look at the on-screen display and some of the other options that come with stuff like the F127Q-P, which has an on-screen display that can be that can be controlled from right there on your monitor, in terms of the additional options that it has for things like noise level canceling, just a ton of stuff. The additional support that you get in this monitor, whether that's with OSD or with features, is actually pretty limiting. This is a VN panel uh, versus. TN or IPS. And being at a 240 hertz, this is a very, very responsive, responsive monitor. I mean, incredibly responsive. Though they claim one millisecond in our testing, we got anywhere between two to three. And even at 60 hertz or 100 hertz, we never got closer to four, mega, uh, four milliseconds if we did grade to grade testing. It's very curved. And when you talk about that curve, that curve can be either very pro or very anti against, right? I don't think curves are everybody. We talk, most monitors are 1800, this is a thousand which is a significantly higher curve. And it's something that many people are gonna have to get used to. I did not. I loved using this monitor. I'll be super clear. I'm actually considering replacing my main monitor because of using this monitor. There's a couple things that I won't 
that are making me question that. But for the most part, when I use this monitor, I love how good this monitor looks. Aesthetically, it's a very pretty monitor. Although a little bit basic, the back looks really good. The RGB lighting, specifically with the cone thing on the back, and then the additional small little bits of lighting at the very bottom are very cool touches. Though, to be clear, the ones at the bottom might as well not be there because honestly, you can't even see them. But the back thing and all the aesthetics with how it's kind of all wrapped around that for the Odyssey symbol, etc., actually looks really good. The other thing that I will let you know, just a little hint if you end up picking up this monitor, it isn't on. It isn't on at the beginning. You need to go into the on-screen display and actually turn it on. Um, it's default to that Samsung blue, but you can do things like change the color, etc. The bezels, kind of thick. They're not the thinnest ones, like comparatively to other monitors, and they do stick out. So if you were gonna have like side by side by side, it could look a little bit weird. In fact, it's got like these little horn type things and you could feel very demonic if you were into that thing. I mean, you might be concerned, you know, you're just a devil monitor. But for the most part, everything that maybe aesthetically this doesn't have, it does make up in terms of its performance and just overall the way it looks. And then it's got one of those stands, those wide V stands, they take up a ton of room. I was listening to a similar reviewer and mine also, I have to push it off the side of the desk. I use an oversized uh, Razer Chroma mat, and I have to push it off of my desk, which is like one of those Ikea, like now every tech tuber seems to have it. One of those Ikea six foot by, I think three foot desks, and you have to push the end off because you can't put your oversized mat because it'll sit there and step on it. Another thing too is the stand's pretty big. If you're gonna put this on, maybe if you're gonna put this on a Versa monitor, sorry, Versa monitor mirror mount, there's an option there. Now let's talk a little bit about performance. Uh, like I said, at 240 hertz, which is what this thing is really made for. And when I say 240 hertz, that doesn't mean that it only works at 240 hertz. It'll also do 165 hertz, 120 hertz, 60 hertz, 100 hertz, et cetera. At 240 hertz, where this thing is really kind of made to sit there and say, this is where it sings, 200 millisecond average for gray to gray was actually pretty dang impressive. And it doesn't, as we go from 240 hertz all the way up to like 60 or 100 or 100 hertz or 60 hertz, we never saw less than three and a half, maybe four second millisecond response time. Now, FVF's games, especially single player campaign experiences, look great. And that's the thing that super important. The blacks look amazing. The performance is incredible. The response is insane. This monitor looks so good. And when it's doing what it's going to do, it sings. I am super happy with this monitor. When I play Civilization VI, when I play Destiny 2 Campaign, when uh, I play Gears of War Tactics, this thing made those games look good. It was like the Men in Black scene with Will Smith. I make this look good. And the Samsung G7 monitor does exactly that. We talk about dark level performance. For the most part, dark level performance is pretty good. But the one thing is, is that because this is a VA panel, you do actually have that bleed. As you turn up the brightness level, especially in all dark scenes, you will see bleed along the edge. And if your brightness is super bright, then you will actually see those white marks. And it can be a little bit distracting. When it comes to everything that's dark, and it's important to the game, it's good. So in games like Tomb Raider, looks great. Destiny looks great. Gears of War single player looks great. When it comes to where dark is bad, this is where the monitor struggles. You can, if you play games like Escape from Tarkov, Gears of War multiplayer, Destiny 2 Crucible, or anything where you need to see something where it's hidden in the darkness, there are a lot of things that this monitor tries to do to really accentuate those darks, and you cannot see things. Now, if you're big into jump scares and you just want to poop your pants, this is the great monitor for you because you just might be like, oh, I'm here, oh, oh God, and then just there goes your bowels all over the floor. Could be fun. Don't tell me about it. Please don't send pictures. Now, this takes me to one of my main issues with this monitor. It seems that all of the stuff that Samsung added to the enhanced monitor is far from ideal. sRGB, which doesn't even lock the sRGB. The black equalizer, which just makes it very dark. And then if you turn it up, in some cases, or turn it down, it's weird how they do it, right? So you have to like turn it down to make the light go up. It's weird. The point being is that it makes it so everything's really bright but super saturated, which means the colors don't come through. And it's just like, I, I, I really don't understand what Samsung did. I feel like the short of this is, is that Samsung did a really good job of calibrating this thing out of the box, but all of the other stuff like overdrive, MBR, uh, just on-screen displays in general are weak, if not practically useless. And essentially adaptive sync, which is like, the G-Sync or if you're gonna use FreeSync and maybe some slight calibrations to brightness and contrast are really all you really need to do to use this monitor. So let's close this out. I love the monitor and I'm gonna tell you why. And that's simply because I'm a huge cinematic gaming fiend. I love RTS and 4X games, I love MOBAs, I love bright racing games and I love bright shooters like Overwatch. In those particular games, this monitor looks incredible because bright looks bright, dark looks dark, and I don't have to worry about finding those hidden things to, to keep myself from having surprise bowel movement. Where this game does not do well is dark competitive shooters 
or very scary games, which unlike Brian, Brian loves scary things. I do not. I am overly active imagination, man. Like I'm playing, uh, I don't know, Silent Hill 7 and I'm not sleeping for six weeks. So yay for me. Productivity. Probably, you know what, if you're into curves, not these kind of curves, baby, these are good <laughs> curves, but if you're into the curve, then you may enjoy this. But for the most part, some people, I mean, Hardware and Box specifically called out that they saw warping. I did not have that issue, but if you are into this, like this monitor is really kind of made for gaming and I can see where issues with productivity could become a problem. Spreadsheeting, if you're like, if you're like some sort of hot accountant who's like, man, I need myself a Samsung G7 monitor to make me balance the books, this may not be the best option for you. I really like this monitor. I, like I said, I was probably and more potentially am going to replace a monitor. I was really bummed today when I took it out to go and bring it over here because I was like, I knew I had some more monitors review. But to be honest, I really enjoyed getting to review this monitor because of just how crisp and clean it looked. The bezels are probably the primary issue for me, right? If I'm gonna go, because I'm one of those people who's gonna have three monitors, you gotta look super, it's gotta be good for Insta. And when you're putting all those three monitors together, you may have potential issues with that stuff, right? Because you're gonna have those bezels sticking out and people are like, why is your monitor sponsored by Satan? It's not, it's just it's how Samsung decided to do it. In truth, I look forward to playing on it. But at $799 and $699 if you're gonna get the 27 inch and you compare it to a lot of other monitors that are a whole lot cheaper, this thing has a lot that it can still, that it's still lacking. And specifically with the additional features, like, you know, it's like the, the stuff that's crazy that comes with the Aura stuff, it just blows this away in spades. But when it comes to just what the monitor is supposed to do, which is display things and display things quickly, it, it works absolutely well. Well, that is it for this review. I'm curious, what do you guys think of this review? I'm trying to do something different. There's so many different monitor reviews out there and I just wanna know, I was like, what is it if I, when I watch monitor reviews, what is it that I wanna know? Did this, mod, did this review answer the questions? Did it actually make you more confident as a buyer with the information that I told you? Are you gonna pick up a Samsung G7? I know a lot of people are really excited about the new $1,600 Samsung G9, which is like the crazy long, like I did a video on that and people were super excited about that. What about this one? Is this, 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 this wet your appetite? Are you excited about this? The on-screen display, I mean, how important is that to you? I'm curious because one of those things that I, you know, even when I've done monitor reviews, you know, even before I was a tech tuber, I hardly used a lot of the options on there. Now, given what we have here, you, or would you use a lot of options? How much do you spend time calibrating? Because I'm guessing like many of you, you put the monitor, you plug it in, and then you never touch it again. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, hit that like button, and ring that notification bell so you can get a notification each and every time we post a video. And also, make sure you check out our live show every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday over at twitch.tv slash robitech starting at 6.30 or right here on YouTube as well. We do things like PC build shows. We do all sorts of incredibly cool things. And it's a great opportunity to sit there and interact with a bunch of like-minded community members, as well as directly interact with me. Speaking of like-minded community members, also make sure that you check us out at our Discord channel. It's a great server filled with thousands of people who love to talk about tech and PC. Speaking of following as well, you can follow me over on Instagram. You can follow me on TikTok because I'm hit with the kids. Yeah, yeah. And check us out on Facebook and as well on Twitter, uh, all at Robitech. Anyway, guys, this has been an absolutely awesome time. I want to say a big shout out to Samsung for sending us a unit for review. And uh, I hope I hope this was honest and I hope this helped. Have a great time and enjoy playing some games.